Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about the first four problems from the latest Ad Coder Beginner Contest 262. So let's start. I have solved the first four problems, but if you have solved different problems, do comment out in the comment box of this video. I will be happy to see the results of that also. So let us move down to the first problem. It is World Cup. So yeah, given that there is a sports event that held in June, uh, this is just a relevant, irrelevant information, but it will only happen in years which when divided by 4 gives you a remainder of 2. So it like this match only happens in those years which when that year divided by 4 gives a remainder of 2. So you are given a particular year. So what will be the next year in which or like whether the year you are given to or the closest year in which the next match will happen. That's the overall problem. So because uh, the constraints are very like the constraints are small. What you can do is that because you want to find the next match. So what you can do is that take this particular year that is given to you and start iterating over it from like one by one and whenever you find out a year that when divided by four gives a mod equal to two then that's the answer so it's pretty simple i don't have to show the code part even if you want i will link all the codes in the description of this video but it's a very simple code in which you can just do a for loop like this okay whenever you find out that n mod four equal to two just print out the return of this at this point or else keep on incremented your n Moving on to the next problem. The next problem is that you are given a simple undirected graph n with n vertices and m edges. You can, uh, it's like you can uh, some sort of uh, like imagine a graph and the vertices are 1 till n, the uh, like edges are 2 to v and m edges are there. Now find the number of tuples a, b, c like you have to find a number of tuples of let's say uh, nodes or vertices such that there is like there should be a connection between A to B, B to C, and C to A. Okay, like there should be a, like there should be a connection. Like now, how you can do that? The constraints are pretty small. Like it's wanted only. So because what your main objective is to just like quickly check out because it is O of like you can do this in O of n cube. You can find out for every tuple. Like you can find out for every tuple A B C. Find out for every tuple, but you have to like quickly find out whether there's an edge between like A B B C and C A. Okay, so how you can do that? For that you can make HNC matrix because HNC list will throw out the list that for a particular edge what all edges it is connected to okay but HNC matrix you can just connect that A is connected to this HNC matrix I hope you know what is HNC matrix so you can just create an HNC matrix for this whole graph and, and because it is too small like 100 only you can directly make this an O of n square space and then you can iterate over every possible tuple and just check that there whether there exists an edge from A to B, B to C and C to A. Okay, very pretty much simple so i'll actually move from the code part because now also the code is not too much difficult and the logic i hope you understand so but what we'll do here is that we'll make an hnc matrix for this graph so what we'll do is take the input of n and m make the hnc matrix because it's up to 100 i'll make a hnc matrix of 100 and 5, 105 iterate over every edge okay and then for every edge subtract one man one one because it is like in zero indexing we want and for x to y equal to 1 and y to x equal to 1 which means that then there is a bi-directional edge between x to y and y to x okay there exists one edge so it is updated in the HNC matrix now what you will do total number of uh, tuples that exist will be stored here it over every possible tuple from 0 till n 0 till n 0 till n and whether there exists a edge from i to j which is like maybe a to b b to c and c to a so i to j j to k and k, k to i if there exists this equal to ones for every of these HNC matrix values increment the total that total number of tuple exists increment the total now why i've divided by six because what you can observe is that i will double count everything like i will count it six times what will happen is let's say uh let's take an example uh let's say there is a like there is an edge like this there is an edge like this there is an edge like this so what we'll do is for for every i for like for this i we'll iterate over this as well as this so for this a B and C, there exists some edge like this. Then, then if I make this B and this C, then there again I edges I, I I just like this. Then I will make this A, this B, and this C, or maybe this C and this B. Then I will make this A, this B, and this C. Then I will make this B and this C. So there are six possible cases for a particular, like you can say, a tuple. So because everything will be counted in this for loop, I will be divided by six because everything will be counted six times. Okay, for every uh, this tuple, everything will count six times. So divided by six, so that we can get the answer. 
Yeah, you can draw it out. It, it will become very easy for you then. And that's the second problem. Third problem. Now coming on to third problem. So first three problems are very uh, easy to understand as well. So third problem also. I always emphasize as an headquarter or any problem set. Understand the problem and then move down to the solution. Like test examples. I try to understand the test examples because many times you will get some information out of there which you might not directly come up while reading the problem set. The problem statement goes like this that you are given a sequence of n numbers from 1 till n consisting of numbers from 1 till n cool now find the number of pairs i j such that they meet the following conditions such that i is less than j like strictly less than j so you have to find out like a particular pair but the minimum of a of i a of j is equal to i the index and the maximum of a of i a and a of j, j is equal to j so if you choose two numbers like two indexes then for those indexes the ith number at that point the final minimum it should be equal to that index and the maximum should be equal to j eigen number of pairs you can find out now the first thing which comes to my mind after reading this problem is okay hmm, a of i and a of j maximum like minimum equal to i and this equal to j so it will like it will become if somewhat this a of i is equal to i because if a of i is equal to i and a of j is equal to let's say j let's say any number then what will happen is that if this number obviously if a of i equal to i and a of j equal to j and obviously i is like i is less than j so what you can see is that it will be i and it will be j so which means that if if a of i equal to i which means that if the number is the index itself like whatever number is there is at the same index so what you can actually observe is that one is at its number like one is at one index because it is from one index not zero index so one is at the one index and four is at fourth index so what you can do is that any number which is at its index can be taken as one of the numbers and which can be paired with any other number that is at its same index as well what the point because if i take any two numbers that are at their index and the value is their index value only then i can make a pair of it and because i of j will be different values pair them out if you pair them out i and j will get the value and because it is uh, at it's like they are the value is the index value only so when you find out the minimum maximum you will get the index value that is cool but that is like is that the original answer so come down to the first like example and directly understand that one and four can be formed a pair but two and three is also forming a pair which means that that is not the only solution the only solution is not forming out one and four the solution is also three and two now how you can come up with this solution as well so what you can see is that why three and two is actually a solution let's take an example so one three two four let's take an example of that so one three two four so this uh, this will form a pair we will understand this and let's say there are different numbers so let's say one two three four five and this is at the index 1 2 3 4 5 so this will like every number i can form pair with every number what i can do is that because they are the same index so i can form this with a pair with this 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 and this so there are four pairs then this number i can form pair with this 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 so then there are three then there are two and one the total number of numbers that are there let's say the total number of numbers which are at their exact position is 5 the total number the sum will be the n into n minus 1 divided by 2 because the total sum of let's say n if this is n is n into n plus 1 divided by 2 which is the sum of 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 but now we are doing the sum from 4 so if you just subtracted 1 minus 1 so n minus 1 into n divided by 2 like put n minus like n minus 1 here so because just we have to find the sum from not n but n minus 1 till 1 okay because we are like doing this sort of stuff so what you can actually observe like from everything down here is that we have to first find out the number of count of pair like numbers which are at the same index and then we can pair them out like let's say that there are five numbers which are at their like the number is at the same index so we can pair them out okay and the number of pairs will form will be n into n minus 1 divided by 2 Cool. so that's the number of the answer but these pairs are also there like 3 2 how are they forming a pair they are forming a pair by one of the categories which is that if we take this number then what will happen is that this like this is index 2 this is index 1 this is index 3 4 if the two numbers are switched between the indexes like like this is like 
two at the two index there is three and the three index there is like this is like switched if there exist a pair that is switched that is like at the second index position there is three and the third index position there is two or like maybe any other number also like if let's say at seventh index for each sixth index there is seven and seventh index there is six then also it will satisfy so why it is satisfying because when you form a pair of that when you form a pair of it both of them will be coming up here and the minimum of them is two which is fine the maximum of them is three that is fine it will also be one of the valid things so you have to also form up those pairs that are like inverted okay like 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 at this pair we are fine with this and at this position we find with this so we just find out all of those pairs increment the value for one for that and for all the other pairs we have to do that so we have understood for both of the cases let's take an example to the code part and all the code will be in the description of this video so don't check don't worry about the codes i will down this is the answer this is count count will total number of numbers that are at the indexes so in like store all on the numbers like iterate of all the numbers if i is equal to a of i which means that the current number is equal to the index when the count the total answer will be counted to count minus one divided by two we have first find the answer for all those pairs else we'll iterate over all the other numbers from until again one till n if it is not equal to i which means that the current number is not equal to the index it is on but if we take a of a of i okay then so what we'll try to do is that if you're on let's say let's say a of a of i means that uh let's say we are on three so a of i is equal to three and then we go to the third index third index is equal to two so a of a of i is equal to two so if so i so i am on the index i so if a of i and of a of i is equal to this value is equal to i which means that it is interchange like they are linked together they cross together and one of the numbers is greater than equal to a of i so if a of i is greater than a of a of i as you can see here okay then the answer is that you have one pair also so this is the answer that is the third problem so you just have to do observations not pretty much uh, difficult if you have done a lot of problems then these op observations will come very quickly and the last problem is i hate non integer numbers so problem statement states that that you are given like you are given a sequence of positive numbers a and you are given a sequence of n numbers now there will be possible of 2 and minus 1 possible ways to choose out different sequences okay from the terms of a the different sequences you can form now how many of those sequences have an integer valued average that's the whole problem uh, you have to find out the answer more or less this way so this is a little, little tricky and good problem let us take an example to understand this total so the example is also there in the example so n is equal to 100 so whenever i see n is a very small number and there is a modular value then it is a very good possibility that it is solved by dp so we'll use some dp here but what's the problem statement is that let's say you have three numbers that is in the sequence how many let's say you can form how many subsets you can take out okay like how many subsets so one subset can be only two that two is there then six is there one and two is there then two six is there then two two is there then 6 2 is there then all the numbers 2 6 2 are there among all of those let's say sequences of subset whatever you can say you just average them out like what is the number and what is the total number of numbers are there and the total of it so it is 2 6 so among all of those which all has an integer valued average okay whatever like uh, among all of those averages so we are finding an average now total sum upon total number of elements among all of those average what all averages are integers so this like last, the last one is 10 upon 3 that is not an integer but all of them are integers so so there's six of the condition that are integer and the last one is not so the answer is six now it might be seem difficult for you but what you can directly observe is in db problems what you will do is that you will try to bifurcate this problem into smaller case like what all things this particular problem depends upon what are the states of it now the state is that you have to find out so let's say we'll define upon how many different subsets we have formed. Okay. By subsets, I mean that it has different number of elements in the set, or maybe the sequences that you are forming. Sequence can be of one length, two length, three length, four length, up till n length, because it is of maximum n length, we will choose all the elements. So we have one thing that we depend on, like what is the total number of elements in the sequence? The next thing is what all elements are there in the sequence. Okay. For every element, we have two cases. Either we'll take it in the sequence or not take it in the sequence. 
I hope you get the point. So we have every element. So we will iterate over every element. We will either take it or not take it. And uh, if we take it, we will num we will increment the number of like numbers of take. If we will increment the number of numbers we have taken such that the total number of elements in the subset should be equal to let's say n for any state. And now whenever whenever we a particular state we have, we have to also define out what is the total sum of all the elements in the particular state, and whether the total sum is equal to or like whether it is perfectly divisible by n the total length of the number if it is that so we have three conditions like three things to do our state defining of so the first thing is what is like whether we are taking the ith number or not the second one is if you are taking or not how many what is the length of the subset or the sequence the last one is that whether the sum of all the numbers is actually a modular like what is the like whether it is equal to like what is the mod value of it what is the mod value so we'll define that. So what we'll actually try to do here is that we will take a 3D matrix and then just write down the conditions and just print it. So uh, I don't. So we will move on to the code first, and then if we have some doubts, we'll also move down to the uh, example part of it. So let's take the code part of it. So what we have tried to do here is that we have take the input of n. We have made some things global so that we don't have to pass it again and that is the total length total of elements okay then we have inserted all the elements then this is the answer total answer and whenever i find out modular type of problems i'll i have all you have already seen in the previous videos also i have tried to use these functions because that will make my modular journey very easy instead of write, writing down mod everywhere and it might cause some problems so write down these four functions and whenever you have to add two things using modular arithmetic just use these functions instead of like doing mod m or something like that because uh, when we are doing nested mods it become very difficult so it becomes easy when you're using this so just write on this mod function which is like doing a mod then if you just want to add two numbers just like adding a and b mod so a mod plus b mod the whole mod same for multiplication so what we are trying to do here is that we have created this now we have to make an empty dp let's say matrix for every state by every state not every state for every length iteration by length iteration i mean that uh, for every case in which let's say my total number of sequence or total number of subset size is equal to let's say one two or three so we have to start afresh okay so what i'll do is that i have created an empty matrix of like 3d matrix of 100 100 cross 100 cross 100 it's 105 actually but yeah everything is size to minus one so what we'll do is that this i goes from like what is the size of the subset we're talking about Okay, so let's say the size of the subset is equal to starting from one, it will go to length. Like I will choose one element and find out all the possible subsets, two elements, all the possible subsets. So we'll go iterate over everything. Now this length is equal to y, which means that because in the end, what we're trying to achieve is that, uh, what we're trying to achieve is like, what is the length of it? Like, because we want to do mod the total length of the average, like average is the total length of that like uh, divided by total length the total sum divided by total like length of the element so this is mod then this is dp because we're initializing everything like this is a global db matrix and then for every instance like for every for loop we're like like uh initializing it with an empty dp so that it is an empty dp you can like if you try to do this empty at every instance then it will like create a very like it will increase the time complexity but you can like directly assign an empty dp here it will increase the space complexity but and then what we'll do is for all the cases so what we're trying to do is that i will add for all the cases in which we will start from the zeroth index like we'll start picking from the zeroth index like i will pick the element or not pick them for all the instance in which my the subset side is equal to this length that is i okay for all the instance like say subset side is equal to one then two and three so all for, for all the following let's say I want to find out all the subsets, so all the sequences in which there is only one element, two element, three element. And for all those sequences, the total sum of all the elements should be having an average value, which is a uh, divisible by uh, the total length. So in this, I will send zero. Why? Why zero? Because we are finding out mod the total length. Okay. So there are different values which I can like. I can find out the total length. Uh, say because. I want only those values that are perfectly divisible by length, the total sum. So what I will be doing here is that I will be doing a total sum of all the elements. And whenever we are doing a mod, like dividing it by the total length, 
total measurements if it becomes mod zero like total and mod becomes equal to zero which means that it is perfectly divisible so we are finding out for all of those values and just adding them in answer just depending on that that is why i'm using this add function to do this mod the total modular value instead of like doing mod every time and so that is how this function works now this is recursion function how we will do this is very pretty simple so what is the base condition the base condition is that so this is i the current element i am on total number of elements i have to pick and the ev like average mod is like what is the average value mod of it so so the first condition is that if i have picked all the like n elements i want to pick because let's say the total subset size is 5 and i have picked five elements if i have picked five elements then in the end what's my main goal is my main goal is at that point my average mod like what is the average of that particular should be become equal to zero because when i pick all the elements when i pick all the elements and for all the elements the total sum mod like divided by the total length of the total number of elements we have picked if it is equal to zero or when we have done a mod of it like divided by uh, or let's say when we do total sum mod the total length of the elements inside the set that is equal to this length because we are talking for every length if it is become equal to zero the the mod value becomes zero which means that it is perfectly divisible the answer will increment one so this is this will return one or it will become zero one or zero depending upon whether the the in that case when you have picked all the n elements it has given zero or one if we have reached the end which means that uh, maybe we have to still pick an element but we have already reached n but in that case uh, it is return zero because it is not a possible answer so we have not picked up all the elements because we have to let's say pick five elements in the subset but we have only picked three elements so and but we have reached the end so it's not a particular answer return if you have already seen the dp state return the dp state standard because you now like coming on to the actual recursion so the recursion is that we have two cases either we pick pick the ith element or not pick that if let's say we not pick the ith if we not pick the element ith element we go to the next element as i plus 1 total will remain the same the total but total i means that how many elements i still have to pick okay so total elements i still have to pick is still remains uh, same so it will not change average mod will also not change because we have not picked that but if you have picked the element we will go to the next element but for this particular element i will decrease my total by 1 because we have picked one element will be equal to one also because you have picked this element i will add this in as total and mod it with len what what this as to like average mod will be telling us is that the total sum whatever we have for all the elements we have been iterating over we have picked the i element so we'll pick the i element we'll add it in average total and mod it with len and maybe it becomes zero which means that now after adding this particular number in the total sum it has become zero so in the end when i pick all the n elements for the subset it should become equal to not in the intermediate state but in the end that is what dp is all about that we have to think over in states okay what is the current state what is the state we need to so in the end the total size we know okay so that's why i'm doing every every time with mod len and len we are updating here which is a global variable we have to take in here which means that for every state you can pass it out through this function as well but what we are trying to let, trying to say here is that let's like, so for every subset subset of size 1 2 3 and so on we'll be taking out this len and then doing a mod with the total sum and whenever we have put all the n elements like all the total has become zero we have put all the elements at this point the total average by average i mean the average mod the total length should become equal to zero which means that it is perfectly divisible by total length so that's the whole thing here uh because the this if i just store the total value here then it will become very large Okay, because then it will become very large because it is also having a very large constraints as well. The total length, total sum, total number of elements inside it will store is ten to nine. If I just store the total sum here, and in the end I will just check that whether it is divisible and or not, it will become very large. So what I'll do is that I will just do mod of it. Okay, and then it will become pretty small, and I can. So that's the overall code of it. You will see the code in the description if you want to play it around. If you want to check it out, you can check it out as. Thank you for watching this video till the end. I will see you in the next one. I'll keep coding and bye.